through the power of video editing, poof, look what we've got. I made a couple phone calls. Well, does anyone do that anymore? Text message, Facebook message, all the other ways of communication. Anyway, I got with my good buddy Ebe, and he was able to hunt down his friend Luke and get us a GSXR 1000 to test the theories we were just discussing. So we can look at the muffler here, and this bike just happens to have one of the uh, slip-ons we were talking about. This is a Yoshimura. It doesn't have a noise insert, so it's a free flow, absolutely beautiful exhaust. I, I can say that. Yeah, sure, we're competitors, but they were one of my best sponsors back when I was drag racing, and I wouldn't have my Superbike Championship without them, so go Yosh. What else can we test? We get the question all the time. Brock, is the R version faster than the standard version? That's a great question. Um, I say we go and find out right now. What we'll do, we'll make a couple base runs on our standard version, and then we will just very quickly throw uh, the R version up here. Now, in all fairness and all honesty, the best way to check to see if this exhaust makes more power on this bike is to switch those exhaust systems. <sighs> We're only willing to go so far with this stuff. This will give us a pretty good example of what's happening um, power-wise, you know, assuming that what Suzuki told me from the beginning was that the power is the same on these bikes. Uh, so we're just going to verify all this stuff right now. Check this out. this out. Here are the base runs we just made on our standard version. And if you look up the curve, these are these are basically direct overlays. We made 166 horsepower peak under these conditions with the stock ECU. That's good. Probably the best for this bike so far. I'm going to go ahead and pull that uh, blue run out because we don't need it. And then I'm going to move this down so we got a little bit more room. All right. Now let's bring in Luke's runs. 164 peak and 165 peak. There we go. Um, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Looks like we actually made a little bit more peak power than he did. I'm going to take his blue, blue run away here just to make it a little clearer. All right, look at that. So peak power wise, looks like they're identical. As the throttle blades begin to close, looks like Luke's bike pulls, a, pulls an advantage on us. Well, let's go check out what's done to Luke's bike compared to ours. Luke has an R model with 2,047 miles. We had the same 35 PSI in the tire. We had the same fifth gear pulls. He has stock gearing. Now, he has 93 octane fuel. We have 89. Uh, he thought he got his from one of the Sheets gas stations up there in the Akron area. Um, he also got an oil change, a 600 mile oil change, which was 10W40. We really don't have any idea what oil is in our bike right now. So those, uh, those differences, uh, it, we're not really testing the exhaust, we're testing the differences between both bikes. I, I did want to point out here, if you look at the air fuel, our bike at wide open throttle 
has an air fuel ratio of 12.3 up here in the higher revs and we've got it on the speed uh, versus RPM we didn't get a tack uh, signal from Luke's bike so we don't have RPM on his but you can see what's going on here with the addition of his slip-on and his setup it's really straight at the high at high RPMs and 13.5 uh, 13.3 13.5 13 that's about as as high as you'd want to tune this thing for maximum power so anything any additional changes in the exhaust and, and Luke would definitely want to have some tuning but as far as being able to just put the slip on on and go yeah he, he certainly can what did we just learn well I think it's pretty safe to say that the R version doesn't make any more power than the standard version the R version's got all kinds of trick stuff electronics suspension plenty of reasons to buy that bike but if you want more power doesn't look like that's one of them. As far as the exhaust goes, um, that restriction down at the end of the pipe that we were talking about, by removing it, did that help? Well, if you look at the slight power gains that we saw, uh, that little gap at the end, you know, it could be from the slip-on, but look at the miles. We've got 2,000 miles. We've got different fuel. Um, even things as simple as tire wear. Uh, a, a tire with 2,000 miles on it is going to be lighter uh, and it can actually show up on the dyno a little bit. So for that little teeny small amount of power that we saw, I don't think that we can attribute that to the slip-on. What slip-ons are good for is they're easy, they're inexpensive. That bike looks awesome and it sounds great. And you know, we've got a lot of people these days that'll say, Brock, you know, my bike's fast enough. I just want I want the look, I want the sound, and if that's what you're looking for, a slip-on's a great option for you. Um, as far as OEM exhaust systems are concerned, I, I think we've pretty much covered this in, in great detail, <laughs> and we've even going through the slip-ons, we've, uh, we've beat this horse to death, except for one thing, that X-up valve, does it really make more low-end power? It's killing me, I gotta figure it out, and we're gonna try that right now. One of the nice features of DinoJet's WinPEP 8 software on the Model 250i is that we can record real-time power and real-time torque. So what we've done, I configured a couple gauges here. There's our power, there's our torque, and what we can do is load the bike to sort of simulate road conditions. Um, partial throttle use, you know, third gear, 50 miles an hour, I think is where this X-up valve would really probably come into play cruising speeds, but also um, low end power gain. So what we're gonna do first, make a couple base runs just to see what kind of power we're making. Then we're gonna pull off the cable, make another base run. Does it help the low end power just in a wide open throttle atmosphere? Then we're gonna go over here to these gauges and simulate those road conditions, move that X up or SET, Suzuki's X up valve, move it open, close, open, close, and whatever horsepower and torque it's reading here on the gauges, we should see some kind of effect, whether it goes up or whether it goes down, from having that valve open and closed as we're reading live power. Let's see what this stuff really does right now. Just made our two base runs. Gotta love this bike. Dead on 165 and a little bit of change. Very consistent. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna disconnect the cables that operate the SET valve, Suzuki's X-Up valve, and what that's gonna do is just snap that valve open. Its, its position is normally open, and then we're gonna go back and make two more runs and see whether or not we can see any kind of power difference at wide open throttle just from opening up that valve. Disconnected.
one of the best things about our GSXR is it's very consistent, which makes results like these much easier to examine. Check this out. Uh, I left the first two pulls up and the second two we just made with the X-Up disconnected. You can see coming up the scale, they're very close. Just to make it a little clearer, I'm, I'm just going to pull out that one and that one so that we leave the red and the green line. So the red line was with the X-Up valve connected. You can see if there are any gains horsepower wise, torque wise. They're really minimal, and unfortunately, I apologize for the clutter here. <laughs> Horsepower and RPM intersect at 5250 on our dyno uh, graph. So if you look all the way up, the red line is with the stock X-Up valve in place. The green line is without it. So when we, when we locked that X-Up open on the way up the curve, it definitely looks like we picked up uh, you know a couple horsepower torque maybe a foot pound of torque or so but watch what happens over here now this is a little bit separate of what we've been talking about if you take uh, take a look at this uh, we were talking about how the, uh, the the other lever closed off the crossover tubes well the green line we're not crossing we're not closing off the crossover tubes and you can see a definite dramatic reduction in horsepower and a couple foot-pounds of torque, excuse this clutter down here, but a couple foot-pounds of torque, but definitely uh, peak horsepower is affected by having those crossover tubes in place. So if anyone, if you've ever had the discussion before that crossover tubes hurt peak power, let them look at this chart. That's pretty much shows you that crossover tubes most definitely hurt peak power. Now, are they helping, are they helping along the curve up the, up the front side here? Possibly. Um, same with the X-Up valve. But this is a wide open test. So what we wanted to check also is our real-time horsepower and real-time torque. So that's gonna try and, we're gonna try and put this to bed and move on to other things and we're gonna do that right now. For our first test here, we're gonna sort of just simulate driving through your plat. We've got about 10% load. Wow, we're just not making much horsepower, are we? Let's see, about 4,000 RPM. Let's go ahead and close off that valve. Four horsepower. Let's open it back up. You can hear the pitch of the bike change, but power-wise, it pretty much stays exactly where it was. We're gonna go ahead now I'm going to move to another test. Third gear, a little more load, make some more horsepower. I'm going to step up. I'm going to step up our load here a little bit more so we can get up in the maybe 25 horsepower range. All right, we're getting steady here. About 3,500 RPM. I've got 25 horsepower. Hold on. These uh, throttle by wire bikes are not easy to keep in position. All right. So we're about 25, 24, 25 horsepower. Let's go ahead and shut that valve. You can hear the pitch of the bike, and we're dropping in power. Let's open it back up. Wow, got plenty noisy. I don't see any power gain, that's for sure. Nothing but a loss there. We're going to go ahead and let's make some noise. Okay, we're about 50 horsepower, 7,000 RPM. Let's put that valve on, next up valve. and we drop power. I can feel the back of the bike move. Open it back up. All right. Well, 
granted, these aren't the most sophisticated tests, but at those different loads, those different RPMs, when we closed off that valve, we noticed a significant reduction in power as well as a reduction in noise. But let's think about that. It's common sense. <laughs> we're making power. We're shutting off the exhaust. Of course, we're going to make less power. Wow. Yeah, the exhaust testing was hot. So what did we learn? Is there power to be found in the x up valve at low RPMs? Yeah, not with our testing. Um, maybe the OEMs have better tests than we do. I'm sure they do, but as far as what our capabilities are here, we just didn't see it. At higher RPMs, higher throttle positions, higher load, when we closed off the exhaust, we lost power. And in some cases, a lot of power. But you don't really have to be a brain surgeon to know that if you block off your exhaust in the middle of making a, a run, you're, you're definitely going to lose power. So, why? What? Why is all this here? What, what is Suzuki doing? They are doing exactly what this pipe was designed to do. That's control emissions and control noise, and it does a great job of both. So uh, kudos to the engineers. Excellent job. Um, as far as slip-ons go with the OEM system, uh, they look good. They sound good. They're easy. They're inexpensive. They are not horsepower makers. If you want to make horsepower, got to change the part that you don't see and that's what we're going to move on to next in uh, our full exhaust systems now we're going to compare the results that we got here and we're going to compare the theory behind the two because yeah, all right it's all bent tubing we know that right um, but how the tubing is bent and why we can figure things the way we can figure is so that we can extract as much potential out of this bike as we can learning from these guys that are so smart. So anyway, until next time, which will be episode four, part three of exhaust installation in theory. I'm Brock Davidson. I'll see you then.